Hello, everybody. It's Mike Yao with Savage Kingdom's Role Playing Game and Fire in the Head Productions. Thought I would do another video um, in the series of the Savage Kingdoms of the West. So I'm covering all the uh, all the realms and kingdoms and territories of Astagonia, which is the western continent of, of my setting and Savage Kingdoms. So once again, we're talking about this right here. This is the Savage Kingdom's core rulebook. Pick this up if you can from Drive Through RPG. This is the beautiful hardcover. You can also get it in PDF digital form as well. Um, yeah, so please do so. The book is doing. I mean, for a small game, I guess it's doing okay. But you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's not really uh, that big a deal. But uh, it's a big deal to me. And some of the uh, loyal players to Savage Kingdoms are super into it. Uh, just wish I could make it bigger. Uh, please like and subscribe to these videos too. These are, I keep trying these videos. I'm just not really getting a lot of um, traffic. Uh, I mean, I know I don't edit these things. There's nothing fancy about it. But I've been doing this stuff forever. So I've got like tons of wisdom to share uh, with RPG, with, with acting. I do, you know, I've done acting videos and stuff as well. So try to engage, like, subscribe, pretend you like these, whatever, and I will continue to do them. I almost wasn't going to do this one because they're just kind of down. Like the live plays were excited and now they've kind of dropped down. And now these Savage Kings of the West are kind of going down too. So, but you know, what the heck, I'll do it for the four people watching. Um, so the next one in the series is um, the Kingdom of Ismandos. So playing an Ismandian, Ismandos. As you can probably tell by the, the name, Ismandos is very uh, Spanish-influenced. Um, but again, this is a kind of a Dark Ages, early medieval period um, setting. So when you think Spain, most of the stuff you think about medieval Spain probably applies. But, you know, kind of take it back earlier, kind of get beyond the the swashbuckling and the fluffy hats. Although there's, there's, there is an aspect of that as well, so you wouldn't be too too far off but anyway just a little bit of insight from the creator creator um all right so this is our ismondian in the in the book that we chose a little bit of a piratey sort of johnny depp sort of look right there it's actually not of course um because we wouldn't have the copyright uh, the rights to that but uh so that's kind of our uh ismondian that we're using from the book um so starting, and I'll kind of follow the general format I did in the, in the previous videos about Kimrith, Kernia, Brithia, and Eridorn. Um, so Esmondos, um, Esmondos is, uh, like I said, based kind of on medieval Spain or Dark Ages Spain, so think maybe more Roman provincial uh, Spain, uh, blending into kind of early uh, medieval Spain, and yeah, you'd be pretty, pretty darn close. But Esmondos... And being an Ismondian is its own thing. So you're not necessarily being a Spaniard. But that's kind of the general thing. So let's dive right into it. So in that chapter I just showed you, this is on page 28 of the core rule book. And probably page 29, I think, on the, on the uh, digital PDF. So um, I'll just read the first few paragraphs. The men and women of Is The men and women of Ismondos are primarily a seafaring people. Although those dwelling more inland have a greater reputation for horsemanship and are known for their talent for capturing and domesticating the wild Matika horses of the northwestern plains. They are somewhat short or medium in height, with slight to medium builds, and usually with dark hair and light to dark brown eyes. Early medieval Spain would be the closest real-world analog, as I mentioned. So let me go back a little bit. So the Matika horses, I mentioned the Matika, uppercase M. So that's, those are... Um, swift horses that uh, kind of live in the the uh, more inland plains of Ismondos. In fact, there's a big plains area called the Matika Plains. And these are kind of like, I wouldn't say they're magical horses, but they're quasi-magical. They're, uh, they're, they're very swift, they're very wild, so they're, um, they're very prized if you can capture one or find one in a market that's been broken or partially saddle broken. Um, so yeah, they're just kind of a, a, a little thing uh, I came up there for Ismondos. Second paragraph. Ismondians tend to be passionate people, descendants of the Ismondi tribes that fled the early tyranny of the Laurentian Empire. They tend to be quite good at sailing, riding, and swordsmanship, but sometimes tend toward piracy and banditry. I should be reading this in a Spanish accent. At present, Ismondos is not completely unified realm, and in fact has two kings, each one vying for total supremacy. Accents. Wondering. I've been playing an Irish character on stage for the last couple of weeks. Now it's 
they're all floating around. Uh, so let me reread that last part. At present, Esmondos is not completely unified realm, and in fact has two kings, each one vying for total supremacy. Um, and these plot lines have come up in a couple of campaigns that have been running recently. Um, so yeah, the, their primary deity is the sea god Santago, although many have embraced, have also embraced several of the Pridonian deities, deities, or even dark cults, such as the cult of Gorgathon. So that's just to kind of say there is really kind of one sort of main kind of Esmondian only god for the most part. Although other seafaring na natures might pick up the worship of Santago. Uh, he's like the god of, of Tempest. Um, he's basically a sea god, but more specifically like storms and tempests. So sailors would would worship him or like pay homage to him or sacrifice to him in order to, to make the voyage to keep the storms away, probably. Or in, or to use the winds of a storm to, to, to go faster, perhaps, uh, on a voyage. So... Um, but then they're also influenced by uh, outside religions such as the Pridonians, because this Mondos isn't too far north of the Pridonian Islands, so there was a lot of cultural exchange. And uh, so there would be deities like Pridonis. Pridonis is you know, a major sea god of the Pridonians uh, of the, south, you know, the far southlands, southern islands. Um, he is more specifically literally like a sea god and god of rain and water um, in the more traditional sense, you know, basically think Poseidon. And I'll cover him more when I get to the Pridonian stuff, if I make it that far with this series, hopefully. Um, and then the and it even mentions things like the dark cults of Gorgathon. So Gorgathon was this, um, again, it will be covered in the Pridonian videos, but uh, this sort of fallen god, also known as the, the stillborn god, who was the eighth god of the, of the Isle of Rodon, but he was born, stillborn, supposedly, and they cast him into the sea, um, as would have been kind of tradition back then. And apparently his corpse floated up to what is now known as Gorgatha, and apparently he either was not dead or was dead and some demonic creature, depends on the, uh, there's different tellings of the legend, came and nursed him back to life, and um, he created the Gorgons. Um, and by created, he twisted, he took humans and other animals and, and mated them together and twisted them in this kind of weird Saruman orc growing ritual thing um, invo in, involving no, no no telling how many untold sorceries and alchemies that were being used um, to create the Gorgons. And Gorgons, um, and I've mentioned this before in various videos, but Gorgons are kind of a type of creature. So in Greek mythology, the Gorgons were, there was like three of them, right? Medusa was one of them. I believe that's correct. Um, so in Savage Kingdoms, um, as well as the, in the D&D 5th edition version of this setting too that I'm also kind of working on. Um, Gorgons are a type, a creature type. So they are uh, typically things that are mixed with, with man and something, or with several creatures, like a, uh, a chimera um, is, uh, you know, dragon, goat, lion, um, manticora, manticora is, a, you know, lion, bat wings, man, uh, minotaurs, uh, are, uh, or minotaurs, as some people say, are bull men, you know, bull and man. Uh, Medusas or Medusae are, um, you know, serpent uh, women that were corrupted. Their beauty was corrupted, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, so just a little bit. So the cult, a cult of Gorgathon would be someone worshiping this horrible dark god that twisted things. So kind of an evil thing, right? Which is why it's a cult. It's typically not a, uh, a granted, a, a giant religion. Uh, so it's very underground. So the, the term cult in Savage Kingdoms is used very much in the more traditional sense of the word, where it's kind of an either in sort of an underground thing, generally with a religious slant to it, or a worship-like feature, or it's a um, um, an offshoot of an existing sect, like of, an, of a known religion that's kind of approaching it in a different way. And in both cases, you're looking at heresy from the, the surrounding uh, traditional culture. All right, so uh, from, uh, more information about Ismondos can be located in section uh, six, A Brief Gazetteer. So that's chapter six in the book. I'll get to a little bit of that at the end. Um, all right, moving on. Allowable callings. So Ismondians can be alchemists, assassins, bards, craftsmen, gladiators, healers, hunters, merchants, nobles, parates, pirates, priest, sage, seer, soldier, sorcerer, thief, witch. 
So those are the allowable, allowable callings. Just a quick note on calling. You probably already know this. Um, this is the closest thing we have to classes in Savage Kingdoms. Um, so it's a good little hybrid. So you've got um, kind of guides your character in a certain way. You get favorite talents, favorite weaknesses. You start with a. Uh, you have to start with certain skills. Um, you start with certain equipment. That's kind of cool. That's kind of uh, you know mandatory, mostly uh, for that calling. So right. Attribute arrays. So as mundane player characters must arrange their attributes to character creation using the following guidelines. And there's the usual chart for that. So um, what I've done in the past is just kind of tell everybody what the, their main. So their, their three favored attributes, so to speak, would be agility, vigor, and magnetism. They can start with up to a plus four in uh, any of those three, and their absolute maximum is plus six, meaning that through advancement you can possibly attain that high if you choose to. Uh, meaning that, uh, so the plus fours, they can only, you know, their minimum starting would be minus two in agility, minus two in vigor, minus two in magnetism. That's the absolute uh, lowest you can start with. The other three uh, attributes, physique, physique, intellect, and willpower are kind of like your normal uh, starting minimum of minus three, maximum plus five, three, and absolute maximum of plus five. Special abilities, they have equine affinity. As Vondian characters gain a plus one bonus to animal handling skill rolls when mounted on horseback. Going back to the Matika thing I was talking about. Uh, and then they have nautical affinity. As Mondians receive a plus one bonus to acrobatics, athletics, perception, and sailing skill rolls while aboard any ship at sea. Because, again, coastal region. So, um, so think Inland horse people, coastal sea people. That's a generalization, but it is reflected in their um, special um, kind of racial abilities. Skill specialties, I won't go into those like in the last video, but just to, um, they, they receive uh, three free skill specialties character creation that help reflect his mundane culture and virtues. Um, so just like all the other human cultures. Uh, so some good, I'll just grab a few really quick. Acrobatics, uh, balancing, leaping, or tumbling, specialty of acrobatics. Uh, sailing, coastal merchant ships or warships. Um, here's a weaponry melee, clubs, daggers, sabers, or short swords. Um, and I should have put Estox in there because I think I put the stats for Estox. If not, they'll be coming out in the Savage East. So an Estox is a um, the early form of a rapier that actually goes way back to the Dark Age. Actually, I think it goes back to the Iron Age they found. Um, almost uh, these kind of rapiers. So instead of like a little thin blade, like modern steel can hold, make a stronger weapon with that. Back then they could have really done that uh, with just iron instead of uh, adding steel components. So it was more of a triangular blade, but it was very rapier-like and it was, it was primarily, if not always, for thrusting. So it's the early form of a rapier. Uh, let's see, weaponry range specialties, daggers, light crossbows, or short bows. I'm checking on my cat. My cat is outside on the front deck in a catio, as we call it. A little cat walk. Oh, she's doing fine. She's chilling. Okay. <laughs> I can see her from the window here. Um, let's see, grab another one really quick. Persuasion, bluffing or negotiation. Lock picking, chest or simple traps. Uh, and there's others. Favorite talents for Ismondians. Uh, a lot of battle talents, a lot of battle talents. A lot, a lot of these battle talents are, um, uh, are almost quasi-swashbuckly. Again, we're not quite at that full swashbuckling era, but, you know, there's a hint of it in there. So uh, things like uh, agile weaponry, ambidexterity, deadly lunge, defensive dash, uh, flourishing kata, uh, opportunistic strike. Swashbuckling, it's actually a talent called that, unarmored fighting, etc., etc., crippling attack. Uh, favorite talents, blood talents, gorgon blood and she blooded. Those are all favorite talents, meaning that you, meaning that you pay one point less for those if you raise Mundian. Uh, mystical talents, blood magic, cultist, and evil eye. Yeah, just three, just three favorite mystical talents blood magic, cultist, and evil eye. Social talents, captain, carouser, champion, comeliness. Courtesan, Gypsy, Mariner, and Merchant are all favored. Doesn't mean you can't get other ones. It's just that you would pay one point less for those. Subterfuge talents, feigned attack, fortune talents. So they get a fair amount as you as Mondians are. They can be pretty subtle and subterfugal. Feigned attack, fortune teller, gambler, poisoner, privateer, raider, sapping blow, secret strike, seductive dance, smuggler, trap setter, and then other talents. Agile. Um, this is the other category. Uh, category agile climber 
Heirloom, Saber Short Sword or Ship, Inspiring Presence, lim uh, Limber, Navigator, Night Sighted, Rallying Speech, and Tireless. All right, favorite weaknesses, uh, Addiction, Pink Lotus or Wine, uh, they like their wine. Enemy, Rival Sea Captain or Bounty Hunter, as an enemy. Um, illegitimate, Oathbreaker, Obsession, Pirating or the Sea, Phobia, uh, Phobia of Fire, of the She or of Spiders. Um, so the spider thing comes from, uh, there's said to be a lot of giant spiders in the Shadowwood Forest, which is in the, the eastern borders of Esmondos, uh, where it kind of heads goes into Lithalore, which is the, uh, the dark she realm there. So that's where that sort of comes from. All right, uh, starting languages. Ismondian is your native tongue. Imagine that. Uh, plus, you can start with one of the following of your choice if your intellect is minus one or better. Brithian, Kimrethi, Old Ismondi, Pridonian, Organic, Shi. Let me touch on Old Ismondian again because it came up in that fluff paragraph that I, that I read. Uh, and it comes up again here. So the um, Ismondos takes its name from a tribe of people called the Ismondi, which uh, once dwelled in central, southern, what is now Laurentian, Laurentian, uh, Laurentia, Laurentian Empire. So when the Laurentians, which were originally Pridonians, who kind of forged northward and kind of started settling these lands, they had sort of a little bit more advanced technology. Um, and their, you know, their culture was slightly more advanced. So they kind of like, basically overruled these wild tribes that were living there. And these tribes were the Guldari, the Latagoni, uh, in the north, the Eridorni, um, in the south, the Ismondi. There was, there was some other minor ones, but these were the major ones. So the Ismondi, um, some of the tribes kind of uh, either conquered and or just kind of uh, integrated into the uh, Pridians, Pridians, which would eventually become the Laurentians. Uh, but the old, the Ismondians, uh, the Ismond, Ismondian for the most part, the Ismondi tribes, uh, they, they, Fled. They went uh, west, and they found out there was a mountain pass to the Blood Rock Mountains, and they crossed through there, and they found this mostly empty land, which is now Asmondos, and kind of settled there and mingled in with whatever wild tribes were living there. So, so the uh, old Asmondi uh, language is based on is the original language of the Asmondi tribe. So, old Asmondi and Asmondian are actually two different languages. So, right, all right, sort of a little cultural historical note there. Sample names. So they have names like Carito, Domingo, Esmondes, Fernando, Orlando, Ortiz, Raul. Those are male. Uh, female names would be like uh, Boniva, Carlita, Carmen, or, or, or Carmena, Carmina, uh, Esmeralda, Juanita, Maria, and Rosa. Uh, Esmondians do not usually have surnames unless they come from noble birth, in which case De or Del is often used in front of a last name. For example, uh, De Rosa or De La Rentes. So, yeah. So, you know, again, kind of think Spanish naming um, themes for the most part. Cultural item. Uh, you may choose one of the following items of character creation or two by spending a luck point to complement the rest of your gear. So they get the opportunity to start with a key to a her heretofore, uh, heretofore unknown chest, coffer, or door. So that's always fun. It's a nice little plot hook. That's why I put that in there. So if somebody chooses that, it gives the GM a like, oh, cool idea. One quarter ownership of a small merchant ship kept at an Asmondian port. Skin or clay jar, one gallon of fine Asmondian wine. Jeweled dagger or short sword, but missing several gems. Uh, worth 10 plus 2D20 silver pieces. So if you want to sell it or whatever, or trade it. Matika riding horse, although it is blind, lame, or tainted, your choice. So you get to start with a Matika, which is awesome. Those are pretty valuable, but it has the blind, lame, or tainted weakness. So you get to choose which one. Uh, I've seen somebody do the tainted one before, which is kind of kind of fun to kind of role play this kind of brooding, dark, corrupted horse. Um, <laughs> kind of interesting. Boots with a hidden niche, uh, a niche in the sole. Boots with hidden niche in the soul. Right. Uh, difficulty level 22, perception for others to notice. So you can hide little things in there like small knives or coins or a small map or something. And it takes a, uh, a successful DL22 perception roll for anyone else to notice, which is pretty difficult. Uh, map to a small cache of treasure. Uh, 5d20 silver pieces and potential value. So if they, if another plot hook, plot hook if they find it, Kind of gives the GM an, out, uh, an outline that it's the, the, whatever is there is worth 5d20. It could be more or less, but that's just a guideline for you. Uh, signet ring with heraldic device. Uh, yours, if highborn, some other lords otherwise. 
So in other words, if you have the highborn talent, it's it's from your house. Uh, the signet ring, uh, if, if not, it's from some other lord, someone that you oath, oath bound to. If you don't have the oath bound weakness, then it's just, I guess you found it. You can come up with the reason. Work with the game master. Uh, last one, average quality saber or short sword in disrepair. Uh, it's a DL20 crafting. Dif DL means difficulty level. 20 crafting roll to make exceptional. So uh, you'll see a lot of those come up in these. I, I think it's kind of fun to start with this kind of cool like, weapon that might have been handed down. Um, and it's kind of in disrepair, or poor quality. Maybe it's even just average quality if it's a smaller, uh, less expensive weapon. And then with a certain, uh, a really good craftsman can actually repair it and, and maybe increase its value uh, and or its utility by one um, level of quality. General code of honor for Ismondians: honor your king, whomever, whomever may be. Oh, yeah, typo. Honor your king, I think I intended honor your king, whomever it may be, or he may be. Oh, it's supposed to be he instead of be, that's what the typo is. Whomever your king, whom, honor your king, whomever he may be, for someday he may have to pardon you. Yeah. So, uh, because, you know, pirate, a lot of his money is turned to piracy. Honor your family or your crew, for someday they may be called upon to save you. So, to kind of mirror that first one. Number three, respect women and children, all others worthy of dotage and a chance at life. Respect women and, and children, all others worthy, and, and it's supposed to be, and all others worthy, worthy of dotage and a chance at life. Uh, number four, capture or slay all rival pirates and buccaneers, especially if they are Brithian. So there's a big, as Mondas kind of has this big sea uh, fair in competition with Brithia, both legal and um, illicit. Uh, number five, respect and honor the charters and codes of a good captain and his vessel. Uh, take not to, you know, charter means, uh, even if it's not a written thing, it's, you know, kind of the general code of, of, that you expect, that the captain expects of his crew. Um, because, you know, a sea, if you're at sea for a while, this is like your small family. This is your small community, basically. And you have to have kind of guidelines and stuff for everybody to get along, not driving each other crazy. Hopefully there's no mutiny, et cetera, et cetera. Last one, take not from your companions and crew, for there is honor even among thieves. So as you can see, the general code of honor for Ismondians um, is, uh, is a little bit of a thiefy, piratey sort of uh, hint in there, uh, and a rivalry with Brithia, so as intended. Okay, that's all from that little chapter. Uh, we're only 22 minutes in, not bad for me, because I will ramble on occasion, as you've noticed, maybe, perhaps. So I'm going to go to chapter six, the Gazetteer chapter, and I don't know if I say chapter, it's chapter, it's pretty clear, ER. <laughs> um, all right, so here it is, the Savage West, there's your lovely map right there, there's Ismondos, wait, where am I pointing, uh, sort of at the end of my pinky there, Ismondos, Ismondos, south of Kimrith, north of Golgotha. Um, west of the Blood Rock Mountains, so it's kind of hemmed in there. Buccaneer Bay is kind of that main sort of coastal area right there, aptly named. Um, so that's the chapter that we're in. So I'm turning to the Ismondo section. Ismondos. Here we go. All right. Here's a map of Ismondos closer. The cutout inset map there from the lovely book. So you can see more of the cities right there. Um, Santago is the capital. It actually should say Santagos, and I think that's actually my fault from the original map, because I couldn't decide between... So the deity's name is Santago. Santagos, the city called Santagos, is supposed to imply city of Santago, as in Santogu, Santagos' city. So, anyway. Um, so that's my minor point of confusion. And then you can see uh, Puerto Tiego um, down there. It's... Uh, yeah... Uh, meaning that it's on an island, but it shows that it's really on an uh, inland. So anyway, it's a port city. Um, what else is, do you see on there? Avaro, a big major inland sort of city. Uh, Los Lind, which is the capital of the southern king, uh, Carlito uh, de Laurentiis. And then in the north is um, Casa Cuandros and Santago. Uh, his main capitals would be uh, King Santos, which many claim is the rightful birthright king of Ismondos and the South King, the Southern King, Carlito de Laurentiis, rumored to be of Gorgonic bloodline, is the kind of the upstart who's wanting to become, to usurp the, the quote, legitimate, unquote, throne of Ismondos. 
So that's what's going on, and Ismondo is kind of the main plot thing right there. So I'm just going to skip around a little bit. Uh, more about, let's see, let's go to language. I think it, no, we talked about languages already. Religion. To the coastal Ismondians, the patron deity is Santago, a god of the, of the sea and luck, a favored a favorite with sailors, gamblers, and even warriors. More inland, the primary deities are mainly imported Praetorian gods. I've talked, I mentioned this earlier. Particularly Atoris, which is the bull god and sun god. Nepalos, kind of a god of thieves and gamblers. Uh, Lucia. Lucia is a goddess of the arts and seduction and, and, and love, sort of. And uh, Sardona. Sardona is a goddess of agriculture and um, um, animals and flora and fauna and that sort of thing. In the southern coastal areas, Pridonis is often worshipped, as I mentioned earlier, away from the rivaling eyes of Santagoan priests and fanatics. They get a little jealous because it's rival sea gods. On rarely, on fairly rare occasion, an, an underground temple of Romega might surface. Romega is a, a mystery goddess, a goddess of mystery and dreams and magic even um, from Pridonia, another sort of import uh, deity. So geography, really quick. Ismandos is primarily coastland. You probably saw it on the map, mostly coastland. Uh, it butts against the Sunset Sea, also known as the Western Sea. More inland, especially in the north central region, the land opens to great plains where the renowned uh, Matika still roam in great swift herds, as I mentioned earlier. There are woodlands as well, though not as many as in earlier times, particularly in the north and east. Um, in fact, the eastern woods are often assumed to be the borderlands of Lithalore, a realm of the Dark She, and so few Ismondians travel deep into the hallowed forest. Rivers and streams snake through the land as well, most of them still relatively pure and often full of fish and waterfowl. The southern borders of Ismondos are the, more, the, the most obvious, where the fertile lowlands quickly yield to the massive peaks of the Blood Rock Mountains of Gorgotha, land of the Golden Rot. Uh, cities and settlements. Santargos is the de facto capital of Ismondos, the religious and religious center for the, for the sect of the sea god Santago. Where the North King only, uh, King Santos, where the North King only until recently dwelled. In the south, there is Los Lind, a great sprawling city, uh, and capital of the South King. There is also Corello, um, El Javio, uh, Puerto Tiego, and the up and coming city of Avaro on the Argentis River. Cool. Um, let's see, really quick denizens, flora and fauna. So we talked about the Matica horse herds. Still roaming the plains. They're getting fewer and far between as many are getting captured and kind of domesticated, but there's still a, a good bit out there. Uh, something to think about. Uh, there's also roe deer, boars, wildcats, hawks, and other animals make their homes in the various regions of Ismondos. Cedar groves help make sh shipbuilding the high art that it is here, as do oak, ash, and birch wood. The extremely rare red lotus is said to grow wild and shut in the shadowwood forest, close to Lithalore, and other herbs can be found here as well. The dark she sometimes travel through the off-roads of the realm. And great wolves, great wolves, uppercase and giant wolves or dire wolves, um, and the occasional gorgon beast can be can be sometimes spotted in the wilder parts of the kingdom. Uh, food and drink, I won't go too much. The, the Ismondians really, wine is kind of a big thing there. It's preferred drink of Ismondians. Uh, from really cheap wine to pretty darn good wine, um, light ale, light light ale as well. Uh, there's a hearty primitive form of rum, so rum is just sort of becoming a thing now, as they discover like sugar cane down in uh, Mezca. Um, but contact with Mezca has really just kind of started. So if you're thinking about if you're getting if you this is intentional Spanish contact with with the Aztec. Uh, Kingdom of South America. That's kind of the theme going on there. But this is a very, very early form of that. And if you're if you're sticking to kind of the modern um, uh, de facto default uh, Savage Kingdom's timeline, um, breads and cheeses uh, cheeses are often consumed in abundance. More exotic fare such as scallops and cinnamon uh, and or mustard soup, and sometimes sampled by the wealthier folk. Uh, they also eat a lot of suckling boar, duck, goose, and occasional spiced venison or stuffed marlin. Uh, and there's some other things too, like eel, grouper, and bass. So, you know, a fair amount of seafood, as you would imagine. Notable characters. Lord Santos is the northern king or co-ruler of Ismondos, reigning over most of the land above the Thundering River. Cat check. Cat is fine. He once ruled from Santago or Santagos, as it should say, but that great port city of late has driven him out for fear of assassins and political rivals. So King Santo, rumor has it, doesn't really live there anymore. He might still have a palace, but Lord Carlito de Laurentiis oversees the south of Ismondo, said to rule from Los Lind, 
along with his queen of sorts, a mysterious sorceress named Lucella the Dark. A famed pirate lord named Atoros once terrorized the waters of Buccaneer Bay and beyond. That was kind of a major campaign I was running at DragonCon and like demo. Uh, they actually captured this like major pirate lord. Uh, and those of the Scarlet Brotherhood. Uh, the, oh, wait. Uh, and both the Crimson Skull Pirates and those of the Scarlet Brotherhood often make sailing along the Ismanian coast harrowing at best. Crimson Skull Pirates is like the big one. Uh, the Scarlet Brotherhood used to be almost as big, but they had a big conflict a few years ago. And the Red Brotherhood or the Scarlet Brotherhood is just about decimated, although some say they still exist in secret somewhere. But I'll talk. Heraldry and symbology. King Santos is known to fly a black or dark gray horse on a green field as his standard, while Lord Carlito de Laurentiis is occasionally associated with a lion-headed bull, usually red or gold or black. Grip skull pirates usually fly, obviously, a blood-red skull on a black field. Scarlet Brotherhood is infamous for wearing red sashes and head rags. The city of Santago has its own heraldry, a golden sailing ship on a blue and white field. All right, so I won't read too much more because we're getting at 30 minutes. Uh, enemies and allies, so Ismondos is um, uh, at least as one great United Nation um, is its own worst enemy. So in other words, because there's two rival kingly factions going at it. Uh, in the past, there's been some conflicts for the Dark Sea of Lithalore. Uh, they would, uh, the Dark Sea occasionally would raid and torment the countryside. Uh, it doesn't happen quite as much more. Occasionally, there's hobgoblin warbands coming down out of the Blood Rock Mountains. Um... And then there's the very obvious conflict. The, gra the greatest present-day rival is Brithia, vying with Ismondos for supremacy on the Sunset Sea. Uh, imports, they like to import uh, woods, leather goods, furs, uh, exotic foodstuffs, iron, silver, copper, herbs, exotic stone. They export ships, boats, timber, uh, wooden goods, uh, salt, spices, cotton, horses, cattle, sheep, parchment, dyes, inks, and steel weapons. So there you go. Coins of currency, so there's different coins. Um, I'll just go this through this really quick. The common, the most common type of, of bronze coin is the Goro. The most common silver piece is called an Argento, and the gold coin is typically called an Atora. Um, Atora. Great uh, trade and barter exist, though generally only in the rural towns and villages. Most foreign coin is accepted by weight and measure if necessary. Uh, the climate of Ismandos is generally quite warm and balmy uh, in the summer months, even hot. And the humidity is nearly unbearable during that time. The rainy season is typically the late winter or early spring, but a secondary rain season being around mid-autumn. Hurricanes and gales are not uncommon on the coastal areas, some reaching far inland, although the waters of Buccaneer Bay are relatively calm most of the time. Snowf snowfall is nearly unheard of, except in the northern borderlands where it might occur once every few winters. Um, all right. Some of the common customs, just really quick as I start to wrap up the video. The gift of a fine horse, especially a matika, is a great honor in the inlands. Uh, the same custom, but with ships or boats, is observed along the coastlands. Bull dancing is an ancient custom where trained acrobats acrobat, uh, acrobats dance around a half-wild bull, often tumbling over and underneath it before it finally is slain in the flesh ritually eaten by those in attendance. This is in reverence to the deities uh, Atoris, Sardona, and Lucia. Um, so yeah, so it's kind of like a early form of bullfighting where there was, uh, it's called bull dancing. And I think there's some, um, um, legendary or, or even historical connotation, connotation to that in the real world as far as the Greeks go and perhaps the early S Spaniards as well. Uh, three horn blows is a distress call from an Ismondian ship, although some pirate fleet choose this to ambush innocent vessels. The art of sword dueling is beginning to develop as is the training and finesse needing to succeed at it. Uh, so those are just some common customs and stuff. Common sayings, even the wind cannot outrun the metika. Shall we dance the dance of steel? May the sun be on your skin and the stars be in your eyes. Two kings are better than one emperor. Santago will drown you for a fool. Sure as the sun will set in the sea. Those are all sort of common sayings, and you can probably understand most of the connotations. Some are kind of threats, uh, and they're kind of poetic and kind of interesting, most of them. So, there we go. That summarizes Ismondos and the Ismondian culture as far as a playable race and as far as NPCs go um, in less than 35 minutes. Sweet. Thanks for those of you that are actually still watching these things. Um, like and subscribe and share and all that stuff. Trying to grow this channel. It's... Eh. 
kind of going well. I know I need to spend more time with it. I know it's primarily my fault, but um, yeah, just help me out there. And if you can pick up the Savage Kingdoms game and um, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for paying attention and see you soon.